Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to talk about some legal aspects in e-business. Legal issue is usually the most critical issue when you're conducting e-business. The issue of law on the internet is quite a complex one because there is a bold spectrum exists between two all or nothing extremes. On one hand, some people may tell you that, well, the worst thing you can do when you are conducting e-business is to break the law. Because this means you can probably get into a very, very serious trouble against the government. But on the other hand, end of the spectrum, some people might advise you that if you have decided you have to follow the law 100%, then since those laws or policies were made when the new technology is not available. So by following the law, you probably lost the chance to grab the opportunity provided by the internet or by the new ICT technology. So this is why it, it is quite a hard decision for you to make when we talk, talk about legal aspect on e-business. There are five major issues that you might want to consider when we talk about legal aspect of e-commerce. The first issue here is electronic transactions. Electronic transaction means how you can conduct your business transaction electronically. In a traditional way of doing that's doing your business in a physical way. You can actually meet your buyer and you can actually receive the money directly from them. But now all these transactions should happen electronically. So how can you ensure this transaction on the internet can function properly? The other issue is about privacy and security. Conducting e-business means you have to share critical information with others. And for others, they will have to share their important information with you. So privacy and security become a quite important issue in these circumstances. The third issue here is the intellectual property. Nowadays, people create a lot of intellectual properties on the internet. And they have to, ha they, and they have, and they want to share those intellectual properties. But when they share intellectual property on the internet, it doesn't mean they have give up their property right of those data, image, or even ideas. So conducting e-business means you have to ensure people respect your intellectual property. Or on the other hand, to make sure you have respect other people's intellectual properties. And the fourth, e fourth issue here is the electronic contracting. Contracting e-business usually means you have to set some contract with other people electronically. So how you can ensure that contract will be performed, will be conducted properly? And it will be followed by each party after the transaction has been signed off. And for the last issue, when you are conducting e-business, you have to set up certain policy and rules that you know when other people conduct e-business with you, you have, to, you have to and will be followed. So it is important that you set up the laws, policy and rule properly. In e-commerce, usually that means during a transaction, the offer and accept can be communicated and should be communicated through the electronic means. 
that actually will cause some interesting problems. Because when you are conducting business through the traditional way of doing, you and your counterpart usually can share common understanding about how you do business with each other. But that common understanding probably is not the case when you are conducting e-business on the internet. So it is very important for you to set up the rules and ensure your counterpart understand that rules. That during certain stage of transaction, what's your commitment and what's their commitment on these, on these transactions. For example, someone agreed to buy your products. They will have to hit the button on your website. Is that means they have signed up a legal contract with you already? Or they have just expressed their intention to buy? From your point of view, probably the answer is yes. But the problem is, is the customer understand they have said yes to you already? And in electronic transaction, there is another problem about denial. When doing business face to face, if you have given out some promise, it will cause some damage if you eventually break that promise. But for some reason, people tend to believe that if they give you promise through the internet, well, they probably can break their promise because they may consider that it's not equal to a real personal promise. So it is very important for you to record undeniable evidence on any conduct during that transaction. So you and your counterpart cannot deny what has happened during or after that transaction. Your success of your e-commerce actually depend on whether you can provide an attractive and a safe environment for your customers. And here is the issue about how can you protect the privacy and security on your e-business contacts. There are quite a lot of jobs have to be done to ensure that. But the issue about privacy and security policy is not only that. Because for a newcomer of e-business, especially for lots of SMEs that first get into e-business, there is another issue that is critical to their success. That is, not only they should ensure their privacy and security, but also how they can convince people to trust them that they can protect their privacy and security. So here, get certifi certified that you have followed certain public standards for those SMEs are very important because even though your customer might not be able to trust you, but chances are they can trust parties that have been certified by certain pu public state privacy and security standards. So by following those standards, or in another word, being accepted by those cert certification organizations, can actually rise your reliability to your customer or your counterpart. Yes, you have to follow intellectual property right required by your government when you are conducting your e-business. So any material, any data, any information you have put into your website, you have to ensure that you have proper intellectual property right of doing that. But because nowadays we get into Web 2.0 environment that people share information, materials, and almost everything with each other. So chances are your website or your service will have a lot of information not only provided by you, 
but also pro provide by other people. For some people, they might want to put material that do not belong to them onto your website. So it will be very important for you to make sure that do you have the legal obligation to ensure those people did not violate the intellectual property law. So for example, there is a very famous video sharing website called YouTube. YouTube has to understand their legal responsibility for those materials that are provided by other people on their website. Nowadays, more and more government on the world may consider or considering that ensure those materials have proper intellectual property rights is the responsibility of the website owners. Traditionally, you sign up the contract with each other. It is very important for you to sign your name in a contract to indicate your commitment. So it is the same thing when you are signing a contract electronically. It is important for you and your counterpart to choose a reliable, trustworthy e-signature mechanism. And also, another issue in electronic contracting is that it will be nice if both parties, before you actually sign the contract, agree. Uh, before you actually sign the contract, agree that if anything goes wrong, if any dispute happens, then who or where you should go to resolve your dispute with each other. With this mechanism, you then can ensure even though you have signed a contract electronically, the contract will be perceived and followed properly. Well, if you can follow all the instructions I have mentioned previously, congratulations. Now you can have risk-free e-business conducts. But chances are, I'm afraid, there is no way for you to follow all the requirements to make sure your website or your service can be 100% safe. So my advice here is that you should set up proper policy and rules that is feasible for your e-business e conducts and sometimes you have to risk, take some risk so that you can grab the opportunity in the market. For SME, first you have to notice is that since you are small enterprise, you do not have to, you do not, you do not have too many properties, too much income. So usually you are not an easy and profitable target for people who try to bother you on the internet. So actually, it's some sort of advantage for SME that conducting e-business. When you first conducting e-business on the internet, chances are because you are so hungry for orders from your customers, you probably will be over beautified yourself. For example, you might present yourself as, as the most and wealthy woman in the world, so you can make people willing to marry you. This kind of conduct might be a good idea for you to get the first orders from your customers. But actually, it will also break one of key issues in conducting e-business. That is for people to predict who you are what will you do properly? What I mean is predictability is very important because if, you pe if people overestimate who you are, then their expectation will be high, higher than what you can actually reach. If that happens, even though you work really hard, actually, even better than your competitors.
But since people have expect that you can do much, much more for them, they will be quite disappointed about the service or products that are provided by you. So even though you are the best buyer or seller in the market, still you will lose your business on the internet. So in a long and sustainable e-business, predictability to present yourself, your true self, in the internet is the best policy for you to get orders from your customers. The worst nightmare that you can have when you are conducting e-business is that when you wake up in the morning and receive a letter from some lawyers that tell you that you have to go to the court to against his or her clients. It's terrible because no matter the end result will be, you probably will win, you probably will lose. Chances are, by going through the whole legal process, will tear apart your company, especially when your company is a lack of resources, small and medium-sized enterprises. So when we talk about the legal aspect of e-business, e it is all about managing that risk. Because that is so risky, it is important for you to ensure even before you actually establish your e-service or your website, you have to ensure your content of your new website is accurate and comply with the current law. It is also important that even after your service has been up and running, you still regularly review your website or your service to ensure that it continue to comply with current law. There are certain weak points for most SMEs who conduct e-service or e-business on the internet. According to our statistic from Taiwan, the first and most frequent encounter legal problem for SME e-marketers is that they are using some illegal intellectual property on their service on the internet. For example, the software they used was illegal or picture, the information, or the material they, they used are illegal. The reason that most of the SME are so careless about intellectual property is because they used to use these intellectual property illegally within their organization boundary. But now, when you put it on the internet, chances are everyone can see it and identify that there is an illegal dispute layer. So you probably get yourself into trouble by putting all those materials which probably you have used for quite a long time without proper inspections. Be careful. Once you have put it on the internet, you may get yourself into trouble. And the second, and the second weak point is about the privacy especially the privacy of your customers. In order to provide your e-service, usually this means it is required that you have to maintain a lot of personal information. So every time when you use that information, you have to be really careful that you have followed the law of privacy. Because once you use those personal information improperly, your customer, even though most of your customer may not care too much about it, but even one of them get angry by your conduct, you get yourself into serious trouble. And finally, it is very interesting to know that even though set up a server to perform your e-service is quite easy, most of the SME are not capable of protecting their service from hacker attack. So at last, their server might become a jumping off platform for certain cyber crimes on the internet and, they, and then get the owner into trouble. 
There is one sim simple rule called prudent person rules that can be applied by SME who are conducting e-business on the internet. The rule requires the company to inspect any of their conduct based on those stakeholders who are affected by their conducts. When they are the decision makers, will they do the same thing to themselves? If the answer is yes, then chances are your conduct can be risk-free. But if the answer is no, or your conduct might get someone, some of them angry, then unless you have 100% sure you can do that, or maybe your lawyer said yes, chances are you probably don't want to do that. Because to get somebody angry about your conduct, especially they are the stakeholder that you are depending on, it is really not a good starting point for your e-business. And by using any personal information that you already have to, co to conduct any e-business, the SME have to bear in mind that in most, most of the country in the world, personal data was recognized as some sort of property of that person. So unless you have proper authorization from that person, it probably get you into trouble when you try to use their information to do something. Well, usually if a legal issue is required by the law, you will have to follow. But for a lot of successful companies, the reason for their success on e-business is not only they have to follow the law, but also they have to set up a standard to follow. That is, the standard is much, much higher than the standard required by the law. Why do they want to do that? Well, because most of the law, as I have mentioned previously, were established long before the new technology has happened. So there are always a lot of gray areas that were not required by the law, but actually hurt or do some, some damage to their customers or stakeholders. By applying a higher standard, the company can actually improve their customers' confidence in doing electronic business with them. And for the general public, a company that applies higher standard is some sort of demonstra demonstration their strong commitment to the society. And also, by applying a self-regulate me mechanism can provide a, quite, a quick and efficient mechanism for review and resolve critical issues. Since this kind of program can be established to protect both the customer and your organization. So when those companies, if they did encounter some legal dispute, when they have to go to the court, it will give them better position to defend themselves. So remember, legal issue is not only something that you have to do. Legal issue can also be a competitive weapon for company who want to conduct e-business. Well, in this lecture, we have spent a lot of time trying to tell you or convince you that there are a lot of legal issues you have to notice and try to prevent yourself from legal problem in conducting e-business. But at last, I have to advise you that even though breaking the law is not an option, but sometimes there are a lot of gray area when you try to conduct e-business. So really, Legal issues should not be the only reason that you refuse to conduct e-business because if that is your decision, you probably will lose quite important business opportunity for you and your company. So thank you for your listening. Thanks.